He brings the changes of seasons and times. He installs and disposes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those with discernment. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what lies in the darkness and light dwells with him. Daniel 2.21-22 Around 133 BC, there arises a set of sages and scholars which embrace traditional Judaism and set some modern inventions and cultural innovations within the parameters of Judaism. These are called the Pelusium, or Pharisees. These noble men of conviction and holy fear will lead the nation for generations and oppose the unrighteous, censoritic, theological leaders. In late 130 BC, by the influence of Pharatus II, several Median towns are on the verge of rebellion. Anacotus the seventh manages to re to conquer Babylon and Susa, at which point he prepares to invade Media. After refusing to accept peace unless all Parthian imperial territories except for Parthia is handed over to Syria, pay a heavy tribute and release Demetrius the second. Pharatius II agrees to only release Demetrius II. On one, in 129 BC, it is the hope of Pharatius II to cause a civil war in Syria by releasing Demetrius II. Anacotus VII marches to defend his garrisons and meets an ambush at Agbenta. Here, his royal guard is killed. A daughter is made part of the Parthian royal harem. His son Seclusius becomes a hostage and he is killed or falls on his own sword. Demetrius II comes back on his throne and suffers a delusion, a disillusioned royal house and empire. This struggle makes it impossible to take full possession of the empire while the Parthian empire fights an invasion and Egypt deals with a ruling family with opposing political views instead of a single view. As Demetrius II has led his army into Pelusium at the very edge of the Nile Delta, hoping to bring the Egyptian army against Plutomi VIII and obtain Cleopatra II, he suffers a mutiny of his own army. Seeing the discontent of the army, Plutomi VIII finds Alexander II to fight for the Syrian throne against Demetrius II. After Alexander takes Antioch, Demetrius II can only retain Cleo Syria and Cilicia. John Harkonnes, son of Simon Mac Maccabeus, begins to conquer lands and expand Judea due to Demetrius II lacking the support from the Syrian military. Upon Opening up David or King David's tomb, John uses funds found there to finance his army within the power vacuum mirroring that which was in the days of King Ahaz of Judah, Father Hezekiah. John begins to establish an empire of his own. In 127 BC, Cleopatra II flees to Demetrius II with the treasury of Egypt when Plutomi VIII regains Alexandria. Soon, Alexander II invades to capture cities from Demetrius II. Due to the theft of the treasury of Alexandria, Plutomi VIII invades Syria. This lands Judea suffering from two invasions and sending ambassadors to Rome. In 126 BC, after Demetrius II is defeated in a battle at Dem Mascus, he flees to Plutomius. Upon reaching the city, he is locked out by his wife Cleopatra Theta. He is captured and is taken on to a ship near Tri, upon which he is executed. Cleopatra Thea 
inherits the Syrian throne, sharing it with her son Seclusius V. By October 126 BC, Samaria is now under Alexander II. In 125 BC, Alexander II has conquered most of Syria. Cleopatra Theta refuses to recognize Alexander II and executes, who executes her son Seclusius V when he announces himself king. Around the same time, Rome grants the Judean request for Syrian forces to evacuate the Judean coast and enables a treaty to be established between Alexander II and John Hyrcanus I. In 124 BC, Cleopatra II of Egypt reconciles with her brother Ptolemy VIII of Egypt. This results in the removal of Ptolemy VIII's support from Alexander II. In Platonus, Anacotus VIII is made co-regent with his mother after she isn't recognized as sole monarch by the empire. To fight Alexander II, the Platonic princess Trifinia is sent to marry Anacotus VIII and an army is sent to fight the Syrian army. It is by summer of 123 BC that with the support of the Egyptian troops, Anacotus VIII has invaded and defeated Alexander II. In 116 BC, Anacotus IX and his half-brother slash cousin, Anacotus VIII, after fighting a civil war, agreed to divide Syria. In 113 BC, while John conquers Samaria, 6,000 Syrian troops from Anacotus IX are sent to help the Samaritans, but are defeated by 112 BC. By 110 BC, John has conquered land east of the Jordan and has destroyed the Samaritan temple on Mount Grissom. He also has made him, them convert to Judaism. Under the course of his reign, during the course of his reign, he suffers a fallout between himself and the Pharisees due to the belief that he should forfeit, forfeit the office of the Kohen Haggadol, a high priest, and keep the crown of the Antonarch due to his mother having been a captive. This sadly makes him ally himself with the unrighteous theological leader. By 105 BC, Hasmonean control has been expanded from the southern part of Shechem up to southern Galilee, except for the area of Mount Carmel and down towards Apania in the northwest. It has extended from Apania to the Jordan. In the southern part of Judea, it has been expanded from the coast south of Jaffa to just past Ashdod and down to Hebron the southwestern coast of the Dead Sea and Beersheba. From Nidadab, he expands it at least 20 miles to the northeast. John orders vital building projects in Judea while he rebuilds the walls of the Holy City, which were destroyed by Anacotus VII. Furthermore, he builds a fortress north of the temple called Baris. Amid the building projects, he possibly has the fortress Hart. Hyrcania construct. In 104 BC, amid growing tensions between him and the Pharisees, John's soul descends into paradise. In his will, John stated that his wife was to be queen and his son Judah Ashurbalus was to be only the Kohen Haggadol or high priest. However, due to his jealousy, Judah has his mother in prison and starved to death so he can have both temporal and liturgical power. He makes himself king of Judea and first of the Hasmonean dynasty. By 103 BC, Hasmonean control has now been expanded to northern Galilee, and the Ithritians there are given an ultimatum, except Halakha and the Brit Mila or circumcision, or be removed from your ancestral lands. Ashurbalus I has all his brothers in prison except for Anacondos, the latter of whom has led an expedition into Galilee. 
During Sukkot 103 BC, while suffering from abdominal pains, the sect of his wife, Salma Alexandra, or the Pharisees, implies that his brother, Antonius, has arrived. Amid the torment of his illness, he hears that Antonius has not only re returned, but has returned in full armor and is parading around the course of Mount Moriah, having out of fear barricaded himself in the bodies. After Balas summons Antigonus, upon entering the courtroom within the fortress, Antigonus wears his new body armor, which he had made in Galilee to present to his brother at Salome's advice. Soon, Antigonus is executed for treason and Ashtabalus dies from his disease, resulting in the release of all his brothers from prison. At Salome's appointment, his brother Alexander Johannes becomes the king of Judea and Kohen Hagadol. In 100 BC, the pro-Judean and pro-Hellenistic accounts of the War of the Maccabees and the events leading up to Simon Maccabeus are written down. In 99 BC, Gaza is besieged by Johannes and is captured. At Gaza, as Gaza has been the port of trade for the Nabataean kingdom, Arte Arietas II loses trade with Rome. After 96 BC, the city of Garda is besieged and damaged by Ioannis, which cuts Nabataean trade with Damascus. Obadas I then launches a war against Ioannis. In 93 BC, he defeats Johannes, returns to the Holy City. A defeated Johannes returns to the Holy City. Upon arriving, he meets fierce opposition. The pinnacle of this opposition is seen during Sukkot when he performs the Nisush Hamayim, or a water libation portion of the rituals done during Sukkot by pouring it on his feet instead of the altar. As insults, accusations of being the son of a slave woman, which makes him illegitimate for the honor of his office, and ergim, a citrus fruit, are hurled at him, John has ordered soldiers to beat the crowd back and to build barriers so that only the Kohenim or priests can approach him. Soon, 6,000 of the tens of thousands are slaughtered. Such actions give the pro-pagan terrorists a real reason to ally themselves with Demetrius the third. In 93 BC, 6,200 mercenaries and 20,000 Judean soldiers oppose Demetrius the third's 40,000 soldiers and 3,000 cavalry after neither belligerent would return home and begin a war. At Shechem, the Syrian forces are victors, and Johannes flees into the mountains. Upon learning that 6,000 pro-pagan Judean rebels have returned to Johannes, Demetrius III flees. These pro-pagan Judean rebels fight their king until Johannes achieves victory, with most of the rebels being killed and the rest fleeing to their defeat at Bethlehem. Upon the rebels being brought to the holy city, Jonas makes them watch as he has all of their wives and children executed. 800 of these rebels are crucified in 87 BC, many of which are sadly the Pharisees. As these 800 men and their families die, Jonas eats with his concubines. The remaining 8,000 rebels flee while Art Ariatas III of the Nabataeans are given the conquered lands in Moab and Galadetus, resulting in a peaceful rule for Johannes at home. 
In 83 BC, Johannes continues his campaigning in the east. Argentos III manages to defeat in battle, but not to deter his expansion. In 80 BC, Golan, Seclusia, Gamma, Dion, and Garcia have been conquered, while Pella is destroyed for not becoming Jewish. By now, John has, has expanded Hasmonean control from Mount Carmel and down towards Apollonia in the northwest. To the southwest, he has expanded it from between Ashkelon and Gaza down to the Wadi al Arish and toward Beersheba. Towards the northeast, he has expanded it from the Jabulk River toward the Naphtali Mountains. To the southeast, he has expanded it from Minadab down to the southern coast of the Dead Sea and towards Beersheba. Beginning in 79 BC, John suffers from drunkenness and quartan fever, a form of malaria. In 76 BC, while in Ragba, he dies and is succeeded by an unprecedented person, his mother, Sama Alexandra. As John Hyrcanus presides the office, or John, as John Hyrcanus II provides the, presides the office of Kohen Hagadol, his mother, Salma Alexandra, reigns as queen. The last time the Judeans had a queen as sole monarch over them, she was the idolatrous, murderous Athalia Bat Ahab, or the daughter of Jezebel and Ahab. After years of the Sanhedrin's majority party being of the unrighteous theological party, the Nazi or leader or head prince of the Sanhedrin, Simon ben Shiptak, manages to restore righteousness and leadership. He instructs that the penal code of the unrighteous party should be discarded and that their frivolous divorce won't be allowed for furthermore he rules on the education of children by ordering that each major city establish a yeshiva for children to study torah and halakha while daughters learn to be wives and mothers controversially he has 80 women guilty of sorcery executed and hung on trees this breaks the tradition of not executing two or more on the same day, but it was a moment of necessity. In order to avoid conflict with the Sanhedrin, the unrighteous party is thankfully removed, but sadly only to fortified towns by royal decree. Queen Alexandra establishes strong garrisons around the frontier so that the pagan neighboring nations will not mess with Judea. In 70 BC, a sage, a Mizraim, or Babylonian diaspora, arrives in Judea to put himself totally into studying Torah and Halakha. His name is Hel, a descendant of both the tribes of Yehuda or Judah and Benjamin or Benjamin. He will become well known and establish a school of thought. In an unforeseen move, Alexandra orders her son Ashbal II to relieve Damascus of its threat from Lutomi, Menonis, and his army. However, Ashbal II has plans for his brother's kingdom and office. Like his father, he supports the unrighteous theological leaders. As he has gone to friends of his and gathered an army of mercenaries. He plans to attack the holy city, remove his brother from his office, from his offices, and reestablish his favored party as the Sahedra. In 67 BC, Alexandra has Ashurbanipal's wife and sons imprisoned in the Baris, then dies and leaves John Hagenus II second the crown. At Jericho, the armies of the two brothers engage only for many of Hyrcanus' men to defect. 
Upon taking refuge in the fortress Antonia, which is now the new name of the Baris, and negotiations are made, Hyrcanus II abdicates the throne and cloth in exchange for his safety and wealth of the latter office. Now around this time, the Pharisees have begun to transition in order to obey Torah, Halakha, and Torah Sebala Peh, or in the mouth, oral Torah. The transition will continue to develop for the next 70 years. Such a transition will limit how permissible activities may be done and not done, when they may be done and not, how punishments and trials must be done, civil rights and conversions are to be conducted. This will become known as the tradition of the elders. By possibly 64 BC, a Hasmonean court member approaches John Hyrcanus II and informs him that his brother is seeking his life. As Aretas III protests Hyrcanus II, through the advice of this Hasmonean lord, 50,000 Nebidian soldiers advance to the Holy City so Hyrcanus II can once again wear the crown and the turban. During the following months, these 50,000 soldiers surrounding and besieging the city allow Ostrobos II to pass through in order to meet the military tribune Marcus Aemilius Zacaros. Hachikinus II also meets with the tribune, who rules in favor of Ostrobos II due to the 735 million to nine million fourteen thousand four hundred dollars depending on if it was in gold and silver that he gives him here is the final conclusion now that you have heard everything fear the lord and keep his misvolt this is what being human is all about for the lord will bring to judgment everything we do including every secret whether good or bad, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14.